guys, welcome to Simply Scuba. Now you're new to scuba diving, it can be quite intimidating looking at all of the stuff that you think that you need to get, uh, but actually it can be quite easy. The best thing to do is just to talk to an instructor because they will be able to gauge kind of what you need to buy first, but that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. We're gonna be going over, you're a brand new scuba diver, you have nothing, but you've just got your cert card, and you think that you need to buy your own equipment, which is a great idea. It is very important to have your own dive equipment, um, but what should you prioritize? In today's video, we're going to be looking at five bits of equipment for new scuba divers. So the first thing that we recommend that you invest in is a diving mask. So this is the most personal thing because it's literally getting stuck onto your face uh, for a long period of time. So you wanna make sure that you get the best mask for you. And um, this one I have right here, this is the Oceanic Shadow Mask. Very, very popular mask because it's just very simple. Um, they haven't needed to change the design in forever. It just works. Very, very comfortable, very wide field of vision. And it comes as standard with a neoprene strap. Most dive masks, they just have a traditional silicone strap, which is fine. But if you've got longer hair, it can sort of tangle. But if you've got neoprene on it, it's just that much more comfortable. Personally, I dive with an Atomic Venom Frameless Mask. Uh, I just find it's a little bit more comfortable because it's got two different types of silicone uh, sort of on the seal, but there are plenty of dive masks out there. If you need help with uh, sort of prescription lenses, then something like a Tusa Seos mask is always a good shout because you can actually pop those lenses out uh, for sort of standard prescription lenses. Uh, but otherwise, if you do have a really complicated prescription, it's not the end of the world because you can go to certain companies who will make your prescription and put it into pretty much any dive mask. The next thing that we recommend is a pair of fins. So this is the Scuba Pro Sea Wing Nova. Um, these look very, very different to traditional fins, but they are just becoming one of our most popular fins because despite the kind of unusual design, they're very, very effective at moving you through the water. So these have won countless uh, sort of design awards. And when you use them, they feel kind of floppy, but they shift you through the water. So owning your own pair of fins is essential. For scuba diving, we usually recommend open heels so where you have a separate heel strap uh, instead of just wearing them bare feet it gives you more power it means that you can dive in more locations but it does mean that you have to wear a pair of neoprene boots not so much of an issue more of a benefit because you do keep your feet nice and warm but yes you do have to buy an extra pair of boots um, but yeah open heel fins they're more uh, more designed for longer dives so if you're spending a good hour in the water you're going to want something like this so that you don't get cramp in your foot and um, you just you're that much more efficient going through the water personally i dive with a, uh, a sort of older design the uh, the apex rk3 fin they're a vented design they're a bit shorter uh, but they still shift you through the water other than that you've got uh, sort of two solofins they're very very uh, sort of fancy they've got a traditional channel style design uh, just kind of upgraded for the 21st century the next thing that we recommend is one of the kind of top three kind of money items. This is your dive computer. The reason why we recommend this so early on is because this is designed all around your safety. So what your dive computer does is it basically tells you when you do anything wrong. It tells you how long you can stay where you are and when you're sort of keeping it safe and when you should ascend. Uh, so this is an Aqualung i100. This is very much a sort of entry level dive computer, uh, which will do kind of everything you need for quite a lot of recreational diving. But if if you ever think that you might be sort of progressing onto anything sort of more greater, then you can invest in something a little bit fancier because they will do your kind of level of scuba diving and more as well. So uh, I myself, I dive a Shearwater Perdix uh, because it's got a color screen. You can change the battery yourself. Uh, it just takes a standard uh, AA battery and you have a nice uh, sort of strap mounting option on that. But there are plenty of other dive computers out there. It just kind of, they're, they're tools for a job and um, it's kind of what matches the rest of your dive team because if you go for something with a vastly different algorithm it might send you up to the surface because it's more conservative compared to all of your buddies. 
So the next bit of equipment that we very highly recommend is another piece of safety equipment, and this is called a DSMB or a delayed surface marker buoy. And uh, and what this basically does is you take it down with you on your dive, and then when you're ready to ascend, you inflate this, you attach it to a reel. I'll talk about those in a second, and this shoots up to the surface, and it basically tells boats in the area that there's a scuba diver here, and uh, basically to stay away. Or on the flip side of it, if you're on the surface and your boat can't see you, you inflate this and then you're really obvious. Um, they're usually in the shape of a bright orange sausage and as you can see they're quite big so that you really stand out when you're actually in the water. So um, yeah, you really want to consider going for the largest one possible um, so that you stand out because it's a safety device. The whole point of it is uh, is that you're being seen in the water, so you don't want to go for anything too small because a big wave might just cover it up and the boat won't be able to see you. Um, the standard ones are orange. You can get yellow ones as well, but in certain circles, these can mean something different. Uh, and also in brighter waters, they can get lost in the sunlight, so orange is very much the kind of the standard color. Uh, this one here is a Mara's XR closed cell DSMB. I myself, I love closed cell DSMBs because they can't deflate once they reach the surface. Um, I dive with something very similar. I have a slightly more compact one when I'm diving in more temperate waters. And then I have a larger one, which is about the same size as this. And, um, and that's for when I'm in rougher waters, just so that I can really be seen. So yeah, try and go for the longest one that you can find. Mind. As a number four part B kind of, uh, obviously you'll need a reel or a spool to actually attach onto your DSMB as you send it up. Uh, these are becoming much more popular than the larger kind of reels. You can get reels with handles and ratchet mechanisms, but they're quite big and they're quite clunky. And again, you've got more moving parts that can go wrong. So a lot of divers are going for something like this, which is just a very simple spool. You've got some string on that that you attach onto the DSMB. You've got a, um, a bolt snap that you can sort of tie it off and lock it off and um, yeah this is very much the way that the industry is going. As far as spools they come in lots of different sizes if you're just going for recreational diving I'd go for a small one on myself on uh, sort of warm water dives I just carry a, a 15 meter spool so it's nice and neat and compact and you don't have too much line on it. Um, I use a, an aluminium uh, sort of anodized aluminium spool which is an apex lifeline spool uh, which is a bit smaller than this and it's got some nice flared edges so it's easy to wind on uh, but if you want something uh, sort of fairly inexpensive then uh, a lot of divers definitely like these kind of plastic spools. And the final piece of equipment that we recommend that you carry with you is a torch. So you want basically a decent powered torch. You don't want anything too big or clunky, just something that you can stow away in a pocket or kind of clip off onto a D-ring. Uh, right here, I've got my personal favorite because I was kind of took part in designing it. This is the Simply Super Mark I dive torch. So this is a small uh, rechargeable torch. You can recharge it through these connectors in the back. It's got a thousand lumens of, uh, of light, which you can dial down if you need to. In sort of warmer blue waters on a night dive, a thousand lumens is probably a little bit too much. I'll probably dial this down to half power on um, just a blue water night dive but you do know that it does have that power so that in an emergency you can sort of be seen in the water. So yeah, I definitely like this one. There are plenty others out there, um, but for just sort of recreational diving, just the odd um, night dive, I wouldn't go too much over a thousand lumens. That's really a good benchmark. Uh, anything above that is more designed for gloomy waters where you really need to penetrate through any, uh, any kind of murk. Okay, so there were five bits of equipment that we here at Simply Scuba recommend that new scuba divers buy first. They're of course available on our website, simplyscuba.com, along with everything else that you might need for your scuba diving adventures. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving. The pool dive. So dive masks range from like, I don't know, $20 to 200, and there are real tangible reasons as to why. So whilst your budget should define your range of choices, should you save up a little bit more just to buy a fancier mask? Let's take a look at what to look for when buying a mask.